Welcome, welcome back to our 12th lesson of the series. This is arguably going to be the most complicated lesson that we're going to go through. Um, and uh, one disclaimer before we start the tutorial is that you will need Fusion, uh, you need DaVinci Resolve Studio. You will need DaVinci Resolve Studio for this tutorial. If you don't have the studio version, uh, you are not going to be able to follow along uh, as I'm doing the lesson. Uh, however, you can, I would highly, uh, you can, and I would highly suggest you to watch the this lecture uh, because you'll learn a ton, okay? We're going to be using the 3D tracker uh, in Fusion, which is arguably the best and most one of the most powerful um, tools in, uh, in Fusion, which makes it, in my opinion, the better compositing software than After Effects when it comes to uh, the 3D camera. So uh, the, uh, the 3D tracker. Okay, so this is one of the, uh, as I said, this is the last tutorial, but one of the most complicated ones. So it's going to be a very long tutorial and I will be going through every single step that you need to do. Uh, alternatively, you can also watch this same Main tutorial is on the Blackmagic uh, on the DaVinci Resolve stu uh, uh, tutorial, uh, stu uh, the uh, Fusion tutorial. Uh, they have it up on their um, YouTube channel. So it's exactly the same thing. And, you know, they go in detail and uh, you can watch that as well. Okay, so um, basically what we're going to do today is we have a plate of these pirates here on the beach. So let me show you the finished product first. And then we'll reset it for... Uh, basically from scratch and we'll work on this from scratch. Okay, so this is the final uh, result, okay? So let me make this full screen and we can see that here. You see the ship, you see the pirates. So look what's happening. We have them there and then we have that ship here in the background. Okay, with the flag here, you can see the, the, the flag is flapping in the background. Look at that. Okay. And it's selling the effect pretty nicely. Okay, so let's get started. Um, but before I do that, let me show you what this is going to look like. Okay, so we have a um, quite a lot to go through over here, and as I said, a ton of nodes, and it's 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 going to take a little bit of time to really understand. So I would highly suggest you to really grab some popcorn and <laughs> and first watch this as I'm doing as I'm going through, and then watch it again, and you do it as well. Okay, so that's my suggestion. So the first is to really understand what's happening first. And then we, uh, we can go through, uh, you can go through it um, again, you know, um, by yourself. Okay, awesome. So uh, let's, uh, what I'm going to do is to actually, um, we, we going to restart this from scratch. So what I'm going to do is, oh, didn't mean to close that. Damn it. Okay, so that's fine. Um, Okay, so fusion is saving. Uh, so let me let me see. I didn't mean to do that. Ignore. <sighs> okay. Uh, all right. So we're gonna do one more time. So let me open the Vinci Resolve, and uh, this is also good actually for for the the time being for, because I'm gonna show you if you downloaded all the uh, assets from the the Vinci Resolve the the their website, you can uh, see how I do it. So let me delete this real quick. So I'm going to delete actually the whole project just to show you how we import those uh, specific projects. Okay. So right click on it and then go here on restore project archive. Okay. Restore project archive. And then uh, the Vinci Resolve Studio 17, then part three. This is the one we need. Then click open and Fusion is going to load it into the, um, it's going to load it into the page here. Okay. And then double click and let's open it real quick. And sorry about that. Didn't actually mean to close it. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go here on edit, and on the timelines, I'm gonna go here on uh, lesson twelve. Okay, and this is the clean plate. Uh, this is the uh, the original footage that we'll have, and you can see that here on Fusion, right? That's nothing. It's really happening. Okay. So uh, okay. So we have that, and we also have this other clip. I might do also a tutorial on this, how to add a flag here. Uh, but after this tutorial, okay. So um, awesome. So let's uh, let's get started then. Uh, let's get into Fusion. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna work with the single viewer. Okay. Because I do prefer to work like that. So right click and then once again range tools and then to if you uncheck that it's all free floating and we're gonna range it to grid. Okay. Uh, it's a good way. To, it's it's a good way to work. And then we're gonna go here on that 
and then change the color management here to DaVinci YRGB uh, color managed. I'm gonna click this, then go on custom here, change the input color space to sRGB. I'm working with sRGB monitor. I'm gonna do the same for the timeline color space as well. And okay, beautiful. Uh, okay, so let's get started, okay? First thing what we're gonna do is to rename this to our plate. And this is the end of the tutorial. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. All right, so let's, um, jokes aside, let's get started. So we name it to plate, okay? So our plate is connected to our media out. The first thing we're gonna do, before we perform a 3D tracker, right, we need to track this environment here. But before we do that, Okay, we can watch the footage here. We need to find points in our video, in our clip here, points that are not moving independently. So this, the ocean is moving independently. The actors here or the pirates are moving independently. The woman here is moving independently. We need things that are basically not moving. So in this case, we'll have these rocks and we have the beach, okay? So these are the things that we need to track and everything else we will we'll subtract it later from the track and you will see. So just as we've gone through the series, everything white, right? That's what it's gonna track to and everything black, it's not, okay? Subtract from that. All right, so let's get started, all right? What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the first frame and I am going to add a polygon tool, okay? Here, polygon. And let's start naming this. So this is going to be our poly, okay? And I'm gonna call it rocks, poly rocks, okay? And let's start now drawing around the point that we want to um, to track, okay? This tutorial involves a lot of rotoscoping and I just need you to be aware of that, okay? Uh, all right, so let's get started and let's start marking our points here, okay? And you don't have to be very, very detailed with it. You can go something like that. Um, and even if you overlap a few um, points here, it's okay, okay? So something like that should do it for our purpose, okay? Something like that, it's good. And I can move this a little bit, I can zoom out a little bit here and adjust it a little bit, okay? So if you're familiar with the rotoscoping, just as we did in lesson five and previously, uh, you know that that now added a keyframe. So let's go back to our last position as well. And we can see that uh, it, it moved a little bit. So I'm gonna press Shift A to select all, then hold S, and then with the mouse, click, click left or right to make it bigger or smaller. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit, okay? So something like that should do it well and then if it's not you grab just the the points down here and then you can you can drag this as well so something like that for me is good then i can grab these three points and you know take them up a little bit something like that just just showing you a little bit what the process would be okay you can do something like that you can adjust that over here so that works for me and then Conquer and divide, right? So first frame, last frame, let's get into the middle, just about here. And let's see how that looks. Okay, it looks good, but uh, it can be a little bigger. Shift A, once again, hold S, let's make it a little bit bigger, a little more, something like that. And let's move it to include all of that. And I can see here, it's going a little bit, it's a little bit too much. So I can probably do something like that. And then I can take some of those points down or up or down, depending on, depending on, the, you know, the position that you have. Okay. And that's good for me. So let's play the clip. And we have roughly a good uh, track around our rocks here. Okay. So this is very rough. Once again, not very detailed, but it's okay the track should work. All right, so uh, so we have our poly rocks, now we have to assign it to the beach, right? So we will add another one now, uh, another polygon. And once again, we can either right click or press F2 here. And we're going to call this poly, 
and we'll do the beach now, right? Remember, I'm going to do the rocks and the beach, okay? So let's get that here, and let's start um, adding those points, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first frame here, and once again, let's start getting these points, something like that. Okay, close it, and good. So first frame, last frame. So we got to definitely, definitely move this a little bit to something like that. And we can move this three points here as well to something like that. And then I can take this as well. I'm actually going to take it in because the the wave here is coming a little bit inside. And that would really not make for best track so something like that should do it for us but here okay uh, that doesn't matter okay so we have that we have that and then let's go to the middle once again about here doesn't have you have don't have to be that exact just around the middle do something here I can move this a little bit you just don't want to catch the waves here okay so there, there, maybe even like something like, uh, okay, I think that should do it. Now I can see, and I can also here raise that like this a little bit. Sometimes it's really hard to, to go through these points. Okay. All right. So, I'll do something like that. Okay. Good. All right. So, we have our rocks and we have our beach. Okay. Now, what's happening is if, if, I, if I load this into the viewer, we have that something like this. Okay. Uh, but you might be wondering where where is the where is the the rocks here okay so we need to connect them so connect the output to the beach and now once i do that this is the things that we can track which is the poly rocks and poly beach okay we have a polygon around our rocks and around our beach now the issue is here is that one of the problems is that if i look at my clip we now have the actors, right? They're kind of overlapping the the beach and the rocks. So we have to actually um, do a track. So basically we need to, to poly them out as well, do a polygon around them as well, and then subtract them actually from the, uh, the rocks and the beach. So let's get started. Um, I'm gonna go to the first, uh, I'm actually gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna go to the last frame where we see her here and we're going to start with the woman and and then we are going to do the pirate number one and pirate number two so let's start here with this polygon and let's rename this to uh, poly okay and then let's say woman here okay and let's let's draw a mat here okay then what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the beginning just because it works like that, even smaller. And now let's bring this here and make that smaller a little bit. This is very rough once again. Okay. And then, okay. She will move. I can move this one as well. Make it a little bit smaller. I think I made it a little bit too small. Something like that. Okay. And we can also move those points a little bit. Okay. So. This one is a little bit big. 
Oh. Okay. Uh, as you might know from the previous exercise, I told you it takes a lot of patience to rotor things out. It's one of those things that really you gotta be patient. Okay. And then you can also do it like that. Okay. So uh, we have that. Now let's go towards the middle. So let's say about here. Then shift A, select all, move that around. Okay, moment is in there. So let's look at it. Okay. And we have something really good. Let me look at it one more time. Does she ever? Okay, probably here. Her foot is a little bit out. That was the only thing that was bothering me, yeah. So let's see it again. And Okay, and that's good. So now what we're gonna do is let's let's load our uh, the beach here. Okay, no, actually let me load the woman here and let's connect the output of our beach to the polygon here, to the woman. And now if we play the clip, what's happening is that she is white as well. You can see that when we play the clip, but if you remember, we want to track everything that is white, okay, which is um, basically not moving independently. In this case, it was the beach and the rocks. But this is uh, a character that obviously is moving independently, and this should not be white. This We should subtract it from the actual math that we're using here. So that means that I'm going to click on the woman here, and on the actual... Um, paint mode i'm going to change that from merge to subtract now we are not tracking this character okay um because now it's subtracting from that uh the background awesome so now that we did that we basically have to do the same thing for um those characters as well okay so i know this is a little bit tedious but this is the process that you have to go through you know in order for us to then add the camera tracker, the 3D camera tracker, and tell it what to track. So I'm going to start with uh, the Jack Sparrow character here looking. Um, so let's add another polygon tool. We're going to go, remember to always go as first frame. By the way, you can also press command and then command right, uh, right arrow takes you to the end, command left arrow takes you to the beginning. So that's a very, very important um, shortcut. Okay, so let's add a, uh, another polygon tool here and we are going to right click and then say rename or you alternatively you can put press f2 and then let's call this poly and then i'm going to do pirate and one okay all right so let's get started uh for for the pirate this this one i'm going to do actually the opposite we're going to start with the last frame because uh it's bigger on the frame here and I'm gonna click on the poly we just created and let's draw a um actually let let let's let's draw a rough um polygon around our subject here okay something like that should do it okay and then you know if some of the uh edges are you can always adjust these things you know uh, something that should work, okay, for a case. And uh, yeah, okay, that's good. And then let's take it to the, this is our last, let's take it to the beginning, uh, shift uh, and press that, actually shift A for all of them, uh, S and let's scale it down, okay. Yeah, so this is the process <laughs> that you have to do until your subject is basically fully rotoscope. Okay, and do this. It's it's. I understand it's a little bit of work, but you got to do what you got to do. But the results are going to be great. So think positive. Okay, be positive. All right. So uh, so let's uh, get that. It's one of the processes that I enjoy so much is rotoscoping. Okay, so uh, something like that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going a little bit overboard, but whatever. So um, that, and then let me go to the middle. 
uh, here. And then Shift A. Move it a little bit. Okay. And then let me make this smaller. Something like that. Okay. Even smaller. Like that. And then I can move this in, can move this in, can move this in, I can move this like that, or you can alternatively click both and go a little faster. I'm just basically showing you a little bit of process. Okay, so with this two keyframes, we should have a pretty good. Okay, let me see it again. Okay, so he comes out a few times here. It's like around the beginning here, his head. There's one there. Then you want to make sure that his hands are in frame and then something like that. Okay, and another one here. Adjust it a little bit. Okay. Actually, let's go like that. Okay, so let's see it. There's another one here, as you can see. Okay. okay, close that up a little bit. Let's see it now. Okay, it's inside. And it's not here. Haha. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. And definitely many more points for this one. Okay. And then here we gotta do this other part of the frame. But we'll do it with a lot of patience. Okay. And this is a good exercise, you know, to really practice your rotoscoping skills. I'm going point by point here, but you don't have to. So let me see. By doing that now, I did a rough track track around him, but we're not there yet. Now here it comes out. Hands, make sure to cover them. Here we can tighten a little bit the space. Okay. So once again, look at that. So da 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 da. Okay, his hand here. No bueno. Okay. It's okay even if they overlap a little bit, you know. It's uh there. Okay, let's go middle here. Okay, and let's zoom out a little bit. Shift A. And let's vote him out a little bit. His hand here needs to have a better track. And here we can go a little bit tighter. So we can with this point, this point is good. Okay, we're, we're good there. So. Okay, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Maybe here, you wanna kinda extend that. And here we're a little bit tight. So something. Okay, his hand here. Okay, so let's check this out. Of course, a little more. Even more, to something like that. And even more. <laughs> now we're going a little bit frame by frame here, which is okay. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, and our character now is definitely 
uh, we got a nice mat around him. You can see that. Okay, awesome. So now, uh, once again, let's uh, let's load this into the viewer. Let's connect the output of the woman to the pirate here. And once again, same process we have to do here on the pirate. Change the paint mode to subtract. Now we're subtracting two of the characters, two out of three of them. So we have to now do the same process once again. Same thing, exactly the same thing. I'm, I'm actually going to go to the last frame and uh, let's load this for the uh, other pirate, okay? So we are almost there, okay? So we have four polygons already. Now let's add the last one, polygon here, F2, and let's rename it to poly here, uh, pirate, okay? Poly pirate two, beautiful. Now let's uh, do the whole process again for him now, okay? So click, click on the pirate and let's uh draw around the uh second pirate so let's get started with that so i'm gonna do a rough shape around him something like that okay and let's close it okay it's a little bit excessive so like this like this works should work okay so we have our last frame and let's just, I like to always do last and then first or first and last, doesn't matter. Well, it does matter actually if, <laughs> it does matter if the character, like in this case, is bigger towards the end, then yes, you should start with the uh, last frame first. So something like that. And then there okay and we should have something nice around our second pirate here i'm trying to not get the other pirate's hands even though it's okay if they overlap a little bit not a big deal okay so uh, we have the end and we have the beginning now let's get the middle part okay and we should have a lot of our work already done that way okay so let's take our points make it smaller so I'm taking this point as well. I'm actually going to take this two points here. And take the top two here. Let's draw a line and then this top two. Draw something like that. The crazy thing about creating uh, mats, polygon mats around people, every person in this world has a different one. How crazy is that? It's like insane right so all right so we got that now so let's see hopefully we got a lot of the first part already uh covered okay so let's see it okay he gets out a little bit but it's pretty good it's pretty good from what i can see let me see here towards the middle towards the middle here it's good okay so the first part is it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. Okay, so let me see that. Yeah, here I can see the head and his hand. It's a little bit out. Okay. And, uh, okay, perfect. So. We have something nice around our subject here. Okay, so. A little tight here. Okay. And. Okay, first part is good. Let me draw a point here in the middle, which is pretty good, this cover there. And then let's tighten this a little bit here. And then the top here, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, something like that. Okay, 
So we should have something like, okay, his hand here comes out. So let's see that. So something, okay, I see here again. And then here in the back. Okay, so, okay, once again, this point. I think I want to adjust that a little bit too. Then he extends here. Okay. And you can see how easily then you can have a lot of points. You know, almost you start doing frame by frame then. And that's the process you got to go through. So let me go around here and let me move that a little bit to about there, about there, should be good, about there. So we should have something like that. And then here, we're going to need to make our shape here a little bit bigger to fit to fit them into the frame something like that should do it okay so let's see it we're careful here make sure to fit them and we can move this a little bit here Okay, so let's check it out. Okay, we should have a really good track now. Only one thing I want to make sure here. It's you know, his leg. It's a little bit. I want to make sure that it's inside. Okay. It's good. It's good. All right. So let's load this into the viewer now and let's connect the poly into our last poly here. And then that's what we should have. Once again, we click on it, paint mode. We're going to change it to subtract. Now what we have is just the rocks and the beach and the beach being tracked and we subtracted our characters from the rest. Okay beautiful and our ocean is obviously not being tracked and etc right awesome so now that we have that uh, we can start to organize things it's very important very crucial to be organized so what i'm going to do let's zoom out here and let's take all these mats that we just created and i'm going to line them up vertically here like that okay and what i'm going to do next is to uh, I'm going to draw a shape around them and then uh, command space bar i'm going to say underlay here click OK. And then uh, let's rename this underlay. So uh, let's rename it to uh, Matt here. And let's change the color to a orange. Okay. So now we have our all of our mats now grouped in here. Okay. So this is the process that you need to do when you're doing a camera tracker you really need to make sure to what are they actually tracking right you need to tell it to uh follow the things that follow the what whatever doesn't move independently to track to and whatever moves independently like this case the actors the ocean to subtract it from the actual uh track all right so now that we have that we can go here on plate and we can finally add our uh not underlay what am i saying uh our tracker so just to go back to it we've worked with the point tracker in the second episode we've worked with the planar tracker on episode four and this is the camera tracker this is the one we're going to use this is the actual 3d track so now we're going to add it to our um, note tree here and now that we have that we can take the output of our mats because they're all connected to each other right so we're going to take the final output right and then connect it to the uh, camera tracker now that you've done that, we can load that into the viewer and we have basically given the camera 
tracker now the information right from all the polygons that we've created in our composition here perfect so the first thing that now we want to do okay now that we've done all of that is to actually now uh, go to our uh, track here and there is a few tools that we need to understand first thing I want to do is to preview auto track locations and you're gonna click OK you're gonna check that Okay. Once you check that, we can now start doing the detection threshold, which is basically how much contrast does the uh, do, does the uh, do you need to basically find you know the uh, to add uh, the track into our um, video here. So in this case, I am going to lower that uh, to about one point eight. Okay, and that's going to add a few points to it. And I'm also going to change the minimum um, uh, feature here saturation to about. Uh, do point point zero one. Okay, even less actually. Actually, point point zero one should do it. Okay, and now okay that we've done that. We can start seeing all the points that we have. Remember, the lower the number, right, here, the more points you can have. You can have a ton of points. Something like that should be really good for us. And you can also obviously change, as I said, the numbers there as well. Okay, so now that we did that, um, we also, the track channel, we're going to keep it to Luma. In case you had, uh, uh, it, it was a problem with the Luma and you want to track the blue channel instead or the green channel was clear, uh, you can do that as well. In this case, I'm going to keep it to Luma. Then the track range, you uh, you obviously have global. If you want the whole clip, the valid, uh, et cetera. I'm going to keep it to the render range. So from frame 11 to 126, because that's, that's what we want. And I'm going to do also bi-directional bi tracking, which basically, uh, does uh, uh, two, so it goes up to the end and then goes backwards as well. It's, it's I always keep that. Now the gutter size is basically how close or far you want it from the edge of frame. Uh, so you can basically decrease that or increase it, see to a point where it's very very close here to the frame. I like to keep it to uh, the standard here. And then you also have new track defaults. Uh, you can change to Fusion Tracker Planner. I'm gonna keep it to Optical Flow. And then you can also change the colors here, etc. If you wanted to. Uh, these things I am going to keep it the way it is and once you've had and laid down all these different points now you can finally start to actually perform a track on your uh, on your composition here so I'm gonna go and click auto track now fusion does its processing and it's tracking our comp here and then it's going to go backwards. OK, perfect. So now we have all the points that we need. And we can now switch to our second uh, tab here, camera tab. Now, camera tab, we've got to tell it which focal length we use. So for this clip, specifically 12.65 uh, or about uh, um, uh, 13 millimeter. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to select that 12 to 65 and then which film gate. So which camera did you use? So in this case, I know it's the Blackmagic Ursa production 4K 16 by 9. And then that's going to also find the aperture for you in here. And then uh, once we selected these things, I can go here on solve. And on the solve tab, uh, if you want to actually add the enable the lens. Um, parameters here uh, you can do that if you had any distortion so in this case I'm just gonna keep it like this but that's a feature that I usually use um, and then we're gonna just before we do anything else let's just solve for the camera just um, this is gonna take a few seconds or a few minutes just in case so uh, I'm gonna basically click here solve okay and you can see that now once I click that it's basically going to um, uh, F uh, Fusion is basically now uh, solving for whichever parameters we have uh, set up to now. Um, depending on, a c on your computer, as I said, this could change to from a few seconds or, uh, or a minute to like uh, 
t- even up to 10 minutes, you know, depending on the, the, your, your machine and how uh, fast uh, can perform, right? So once again, uh, it's very important for you, once again, uh, just to reiterate everything we've, we've done so far, uh, before you actually add a camera tracker into, the, um, into your composition, you want you want to make sure to have points right in your um, in your composition to uh, to track it to. So in this case, it, it, you have de- independent points and dependent points. Independent points are things that are moving independently, right? So these like the ocean, like the actors, you cannot track to things like that because these are things that are not basically uh, static objects or static things within your frame. What you want to connect it to is to your um, uh, so in this case was the rocks because those, those are never moving that they're not moving and the beach so we have a good plane as a reference for our uh, image okay and then you can subtract all the other moving things to it okay so now once you have that you basically have all the available information then for the camera tracker um, uh, at your disposal so um so uh, by doing that, now uh, you can find, so I, I did all that process and uh, group them together, right? And then after the plate, I did add the camera tracker, right? Which we, it's, it's the 3D tracker. And then we uh, added a few parameters here, okay? Um, for us to, to basically uh, have a good track, right? And then uh, on the next tab on the camera, tab we the two most important things that we need to add are the focal length that are used so if you're on set or um you know you know which lens you shot with it's very important to know which focal length did you use okay and then the film gate so basically we need to know if it was shot, shot 16 by 9 if you shot anamorphic or like whichever uh camera so model uh and camera gate was was used in this case okay so these are very important things for the uh, tracker to give you an accurate basically um, um, uh, a track, right, to your image. Okay, perfect. So now that we did that, we do get something that is called the average solve error. Okay, so in this case, uh, any solve error above one, it's 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 bad. It's not something that you can work with. So point, uh, so one point one, one point two, one point three. That's bad. Anything below point five is usually good okay so now we get an, an average error so uh of about uh 0.22 okay which is pretty good okay and but we can refine this a little more so now you can see that now we have all these points right but there is things that i can basically uh get rid of here so you can see that there is things like a red track here okay so there's something like that you can just delete it okay so you click on it and then down here, you go on delete, okay? And this is one of the ways in which you can basically uh, delete some of the, uh, if, if the tracker was bad, if it was like a, uh, like, like a, like one of those red dots, okay? Or if there is something that it's not really tracking properly. So this one here, I it's like going inside, like over the ocean, etc. things like that. So you can click again on it and then say delete. Okay, so and you can get uh, rid of that point. Okay, specifically. So, um, so if I play my clip, something like that, I can go here and say delete. Okay, and um, so uh, then you have some points here as well. So this one you can delete. This one you can delete. Right, all the red. All right, so that one you can as well delete. All right, and kind of to have like a better uh, solve error. So all that I'm doing now, I'm taking out some points because I want to improve the solve error. Remember, the lower the number here, the better your um, your solve error, which means uh, the, the, the better it is, basically. And now that I did that, um, okay, um, I can uh, also now start to uh, basically um, this is one of the ways in which you can delete some of these points here. The other one is to uh, with the track filtering here. So if I lower my track filtering, so let's say this from six, I want to take it to three here, and then I'm going to take the maximum here track error to about uh, point two. So I'm going to increase that a little bit, and the maximum solve error. This is the track error. This is solve error. Okay, so I'm going to take this to about three point two as well, and then I'm going to say select track uh, tracks uh, satisfying filters. Okay, over there. And I'm going to say 
delete. And you see delete some points in here. And now what I'm going to do, now that I did that, I am going to solve for the uh, camera tracker one more time. And this is an alternative way in which you can basically tell Fusion, tell the camera tracker to get rid of points in uh, by filtering them rather than you manually going in and uh, deleting each point each and every time, you know, because, you know, it, in, in a scene like this, maybe it's it's okay. Or, I mean, there's still quite a, a lot of points, but let's say you're working on something more complicated and you just want to filter that specific uh, um you know, you want to filter it that, that way you can get rid of them faster. Okay. So this is a little bit of a process. Uh, you know, oftentimes you will go over solving multiple times, you know, um, even, even three, four, five times, depending on it. A lot of times what people do, uh, what I've seen is that you will save, you know, a version of that specific solve because sometimes you can push it too far and actually um, go backwards and and really um, you know uh, actually go in a destructive way where your solve is actually not as good anymore so it's like things like that so it's always good to have a copy um, you know saved and then you know and keep going with different solves so in this case for for our example here for our lesson uh this is enough you know hopefully this lowers a little bit there's instances where it might not in either way, an average solve error of like 0.22, like whatever we have here right now, it's pretty, pretty good. You know, uh, it's, it's okay. So you went down a little bit. So now it's 23, 21, uh, 32, which is, it, which is good. It's something that is, um, that something we can work with. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do now is go to the export tab. And before we export all the info that we have here, we are going to actually go here on 3D scene uh, transform. I'm going to change this from aligned to unaligned. And we need to tell it which the ground plane is and then a, a point of origin. Okay, very simple. I'm going to select a point here um, in in my, uh, so like something like this. Okay, so something like that. Okay, that point. Actually, let me just select the whole ground here. And then with shift, you can select a few more things as well. So something like that should do it. Okay, perfect. And now that you selected all these things, okay, maybe a little more. Okay, it's perfect, okay? So we have enough of the points. Uh, on the actual uh, orientation here, we're gonna say set from selection, okay? So we have the um, we have our orientation, and now we can also set a origin point here. So I can go to uh, maybe uh, I don't know a few points here, okay? And then say uh, over here you go on the origin. You're gonna say set origin, okay? And now we can just go back on aligned, and now we have all these parameters locked, as you can see here. Okay, perfect. Now we can finally export our uh, our camera track here. Okay, so now we did that. We're gonna click on export. Give it a few minutes. My computer now it's starting to <laughs> processing power is going a little slower. All right, perfect. So now we got our uh, we get five things once we export. So let me organize this a little bit right now. Okay, and let's let's we really need to do some organization. Okay, I'm gonna take this all the way to the end. And, you know, I'm gonna take my mats as well, all the way here, and my camera tracker all the way here, because we don't need it for right now, okay? Okay, so we got it, we have something more like this now. So now what I'm gonna do is move those five points that we got here into the, the top, okay, even more. We need to make some space here, something like that, okay? And let me tell you now what is going to happen. So now we got our camera, okay? We have a camera here, right? Camera 3D. We have the point cloud, which we're going to go through in just a bit. Then we have a ground plane right, which selected, which we did, the Merge 3D, which you're familiar with, right, which is our, where it connects all, it's basically to put different objects, different things, this is basically the, the glue 
right? The glue node, okay? And then we have the uh, camera tracker, right? So we can view that as well. So now let's do, uh, let's, let's add that chip now. That's a little bit more of the fun part, okay? I'm gonna view the camera tracker here. And what I'm going to do is to go on the media pool, okay? And bring in the, uh, go on the uh, camera tracking here and let's bring in the pirate ship, okay? Now let's view the pirate ship. This is a just a basic image that is being already uh, cut out, right? And with the has an alpha channel embedded to it, all right? So let's bring that into the uh, our composition, right? In order to do that on our media one, uh, first off F two, let's name it to pirate, and let's say ship, okay? And uh, we can't just take this and put into a merge. You can't do that. Remember, you need a plane, right, to uh, a car to project it to before we can connect it to our merge. Uh, okay, so you know this is a two D uh, image. So to do that, I'm gonna pirate ship here. I am going to uh, add an image plane three D. Now, if I load that, we have our pirate ship, right, on a on an image plane. Now we can connect that to our merge 3D by basically just taking the output of, uh, of image plane 3D and connect it to our merge 3D one. And then let's view the camera tracker. Look what happens now. We added now our, um, let me make some space here. We added now our uh, ship to the, uh, to basically the, um, composition here. However, it's we need to move it, we need to put in the background, right? So let's get started with that. So I am going to click on the image plane, and then I'm going to go on the transform tab here. And I'm going to adjust the translation. Uh, before I do that, let me take the size of this. Okay, because if we move it back in Z space, it's going to get really small. So let me let me let me show you basically, if I go back in Z space, look, we can't even see it. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to make the size of this to about 20. Now it's huge. See, it's not even covering the frame anymore. So we're going to take the now the Z translation tab, and we're going to put it back. into. This. But look what happens now. What's happening is that if I go more than that, it just disappears. See? And that's happening because of our camera 3D. Okay, so if I if I load in, just give it a minute. It's 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 really. Let me save just in case. If I put the uh, load the Mercury D here, okay. Uh, look what's happening. This is our entire composition, and then do you see the ship here? So look what happens when I move it back. It's basically going behind our behind our plane that's why it's disappearing so we need to adjust our plane for to take our shape let's say our ship i want to take it 40 feet away right i want to take it to a point where it's 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 further away from our rocks and all that right so you see this is our distance the, the ship should be somewhere around here exactly where, where we can see it right now so i'm going to put that to about um minus 40, okay? With our size 20 should be good. But now we need to see behind behind our plane because if, if we don't, it, it's just not, right? Now, now it's covered, that, that's why we don't see it. So let me load this and that's that's why we don't see it. So if I go on my camera here, okay? So now this is locked, I, I cannot uh, change parameters, but if I click on uncheck this, okay, now it's unchecked. And on my controls, I can now the far edge here, see that you have the near and then the far, right, on the camera 3D. I am going to increase that to about 50. Okay, once I do that, oh, didn't change it. Did it change it? Okay, 50. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to change is the actual image here. Okay, so, it, okay, so because the depth is at 20, I see what's happening. Okay, so let me load it. So look what's happening, okay? I know what's happening. So look what's happening. So once again, and I'm sorry, it keeps loading. It's the speed of it. 
what I did here, remember, I, just a few seconds ago on the controls, I put it to 50. Remember, it was like a 22. Okay. So this is, if we push it back now to, to 50, right, in this space, it, it covers our ship as well. However, the actual image plane here needs to also move backwards, okay, be in this space. And we didn't move that. So if we go back on the image here and we change the depth, to about 50, look what happens. Now we moved our plane, right, back as well. So now what happens is if we load that into our camera tracker too, that's where we have our ship now, okay? And we can see it. Now I can go back to my camera here and it's better just to lock it because you don't wanna change uh, specific attributes, et cetera. So even if I click here, see nothing is happening. So it's locked, it's this lock right here. Um, Awesome, so now let's go back on my image plane here and let's adjust a little bit the parameters here. So let's uh, move in X space. I'm gonna move it probably like towards the center of the frame, something like that. And then uh, we'll, we'll bring it up, okay? We'll bring it to a point where it makes sense the ship to be there. So kind of like that, okay? And then you see it's like a little bit slanted. It's a little bit, it's not, we need to fix the rotation here. So to do that, I am going to go on the Z space here and I'm gonna go minus uh, or plus uh, about six, about six should be good here. And then the, uh, as I said, the Y controls, as you know, very well, the vertical. And then let's move it to about, So now look at the image. So now we're playing. You can see that that ship now, it's perfectly tracking alongside the footage. So now when our subjects are moving here, our actors, the ship is tracked as well into the, uh, the plane the field. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we put our ship now in the background and it's looking good. Now, this is one of the things that you have to do is to basically track, right? So do like your, go through your mats, track, uh, find the points uh, that they're not moving, uh, the independent points and dependent points, and then do the track, subtract all the, the characters, etc. Now you do a camera tracker and then you can start adding uh, your uh, assets into it. Now, another important part is to do, actually work on integration, right? To integrate the image that you added, in this case, the ship, into our background. Because right now, it's just not working, okay? It just looks like you pasted in, in, in <laughs> an image into a background, even though it is tracked and it's working, but we need to really uh, integrate that better, okay? So let's start working on that, okay? All right, so let's do that. Move that a little bit there. And I'm gonna move my plate. A little bit backward. Move my plate about there. Okay. All right. So one of the nodes that is going to help us fix this now is the light. Okay. It's a light. So if we type here light, these are all the lights we have. We have spotlights, point lights, neon lights, light trim, all of them. So I'm going to take the ambient light. I'm going to add it here. And what the ambient light does, we used it on episode and uh, lesson nine and ten is to, it's it's an even light all across, okay? So I'm gonna add that to the Merge 3D. Look at that, to the Merge 3D. And you will see that nothing's gonna happen. Check this out, nothing, okay? Nothing's happening. That's because we have to uh, activate the light. I'm gonna go on the camera tracker here and on lighting, enable lighting. Once I enable it, look, it's all black. Look, that was before, that's now. That's how I know that light is there, okay? Because, give me a second, I'll show you. My, okay, so we add our lighting, right? I mean, like, I like, I'm keeping everything organized here. Uh, we're gonna go on the, um, it's it's loading, sorry about that. And I'm gonna click on uh, ambient light here. And I am going to add this to about two. So look at the ship. Now we brought back the uh, light into our, our uh, ship. This is the before versus the after, okay? So now we are basically integrating that a little better. 
However, this is not matching with the background. That's because I also want to, uh, it's a little bit red, match it with, uh, you know, things that are so far away to the ocean should be a little more blue. So take the color checker here and just bring it around. See what's happening to the ship like that. So we added that little bit of a blue tint, which is already helping tremendously with the, with the image. Okay, it still looks like pasted in. Don't worry, we will fix it. But I just want to show you for right now what we are getting here, which is already a big improvement. Okay, so now that we did that, we can uh, start adding uh, a color corrector, right? Which is always such a, an important tool to have. Um, so let me do that. So I'm going to take my camera tracker here and I am going to add a color corrector right underneath. And I am also going to add a merge node, okay, into our uh, into our node editor here, and then connect that to my merge here. Now we have no need any longer for this camera tracker here, so I can directly load my merge now. Okay, so let me save that. And we should look with something more like this now, okay? And let me load that. And we can see we have our plane and we have our uh, ship there, okay? And now let's start working on it. First thing on the color corrector, on the options, I'm gonna activate the pre-divide and post-multiply checkbox here. Because now every change I make, I make it only to the ship rather than the whole background, okay? So on the um, correction here, I'm definitely going to make it a little more blue, even more. And let's blend this a better with the background. So take this to lift to about 0.5 and the gamma. Maybe the lift, take it to 0.2 and that point. So it's a little bit hazier now. You can see what's happening. Let me save. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to really do that. You see what's happening here? Now we blended it better. I want to show you just the before and after, okay? How much of a change that really makes into our, into our image, okay? Because the image is a little bit hazy here. So it's, it's a little bit of it, right? So by doing that with the ship, now we blended it much, much better inside our uh, frame here okay beautiful so uh, oh my god I keep doing that uh, next thing now is to uh, basically add a uh, let's add some we're gonna add some actually yeah we can add uh, and add some grain okay Click on the grain and look what happens. This is so strong. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's too much. So let's fix the grain for us. So uh, the grain size, we're gonna do about 0.5. Okay, still too much. So we're gonna do 0.25. Still too much, we're gonna do 0 0.2. Okay, which is pretty good. Now we adding the grain because I want it to feel as if this is not just a sharp asset that we just added an image but rather something that we shot with the camera and there's always some kind of grain so uh still it's not doing it for me so i'm going to take it to about uh 2.5 here okay much much better even less actually i'm going to do two so let's try that so a lot of it's like you really got to play with the numbers and really find what's good for you so 1.7 that's the that's the good spot for us okay so now oh yes See, see now it's blending much, much better with the background, right? We added this noise and it's really like adding that texture to our, to our background. Okay, awesome. So now next thing I'm gonna do is actually add some motion to this. So as the camera is spinning here, see, we're gonna add a little bit of motion to it. So I'm gonna go back on the camera tracker and I'm gonna go to the settings and I'm gonna activate the motion blur. Once I activate the motion blur, Pay close attention to the ship over here and how much that it's going to really add. Okay, pay attention to it. Motion blur, click. 
look at that. Okay, so now it looks much, much better blended in. I can even change the quality. So I'm going to take it to about four. Okay, and now really feels much, much more like that ship is actually there rather than just a, see that? Rather than just a, you know, an asset that we just added there, okay? So uh, I hope you're following along. We're doing really, really well, okay? Uh, as I said, this is a long tutorial and we're not done yet, okay? So we did add quite a few nodes so far, okay? To our, uh, I'm actually gonna move this. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer here. So we're, we're, we're looking good, okay? So now let's do something else to it now, to our uh, composition here. And that is going to be now the uh, to remove something specific here. So let's say there is something on the frame and we went through this where we painted out things on uh, lesson number four. How do we paint out, there is a, this footstep here, a crew member uh, footstep or something like that. And we don't want that, okay? Uh, how do we uh, paint that out? Well, for the most part, it's similar to what we did on episode uh, four, but with a little bit of uh, things that we need to learn, a few techniques, uh, and projection is going to be one of them. So let's get started. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, add a new node, okay? And we're going to add a time stretcher. Remember, we're familiar with this. We used it in, in lesson number four, okay? And we're going to connect the time stretcher now to our plate. So let's get here. We're going to work on this section right now, okay? And what we need to do now is um, add a specific frame. So in this case for us is frame 71, okay? And let's type that. Okay, so now we're locking to the same frame 71. And let's add now the famous paint tool, okay? So paint tool here. And just like we did in lesson four, let's choose the stroke here and then the on the apply mode, the clone, okay? And now once again, option, click a point here and then Left click and start. Yep. So let's say that point is not working, then click here and start drawing the opposite side. Okay. And now it should be gone. Okay. That was a little too much there. Something like that. Something like that works for me. Okay. And now that it's it's gone. You can see that there. Okay. Now let's add a little bit. Uh, let's add a uh, now. Let's let's look at it. That's the uh, same step. We're gonna add the uh, polygon tool here. Okay, we're gonna add a polygon tool. Let's take this down. And with the polygon selected, let's draw around roughly. Let's let me draw roughly around a polygon around that footstep there. Okay, and then. Um, I can load the polygon here and then I can really soften the edge a little bit, something like that. Okay. And uh, we can load this back. Okay. Sorry, it's like loading a little bit. It takes a little bit of time for that to load. And what I'm going to add next is a is a mat control. Okay, here. And then let me connect that to the mat control. And then I connect the polygon here. Okay to the foreground of our mat control. And then if I uh, look at this, nothing is happening, okay? That's because we, you know, we worked with mat controls in the past. We need to change the combine because we're combining now the 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 alpha, right? We're combining uh, to, to our image. So we're gonna change that to combine alpha, okay? And then we have to obviously, just like we've done in the past, post multiply this, uh, the, this specific image. So once I do that, that's our um, that is our patch here, okay, in in the lower end here. Uh, perfect. So now, okay, 
we that we have that we can finally start working now on what's called the, the projection technique okay and in order to do that i am going to go first on the camera that we have here i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it here all right so now let's unlock this camera let's uh right click and rename this frame uh, this camera to cam then which frame did you use? So frame 71 in this case, okay? And uh, by the way, you can watch this as well on the Blackmagic um, website. They go through this as well. And I'm basically doing the same thing. So uh, so now that we added the camera frame at 71, we can basically connect the output of uh, the Mac control into the camera we just created. And by doing that, it's going to add the, uh, the uh, projection here. Okay, the projection um, tab. Okay, and um, now on and, and here now we can uh, basically. I am going to go on the projection. Just give it a second. It's my my computer keeps loading. Uh, let me save just in case. Uh, projection, and we're gonna enable the camera projection, and then I am going to change the uh, projection mode from ambient light to a texture. Okay, so now. Let me make sure is okay. So now, okay, that we have that, we can finally connect now our camera that we just uh, basically created here, duplicated into our Merch 3D, okay, and then I can load my Merch 3D, and we can see now um, what's going on here. Um, one thing that I want to do though, real quick, is I want to. Uh, I want to add here the image plane. So let's quickly change the viewer to camera 3D. Okay. And let's connect our plate, the beginning plate, back to our uh, camera. Okay. And let's load that. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. So let's go into perspective here. Okay. And we can see now that, you know, this before this is after we connect our camera. Okay. This is our merge. You can see. You save. Sometimes it's a, it's a little bit slow for some reason. Uh, my computer probably the main, being the main cause. Uh, and then let's go back to uh, camera 3D1 here, okay? And uh, okay. And now what I'm going to do next, okay, is to um, go back into my perspective mode here. And we, I, I will um, if if I go back right to my frame here. We can see now that the frame 71, we don't have that footstep. That's because I connected the frame 71, the, the, the projection um, camera that I added, right? The, the node here. So if I disconnect it, look over here. Uh, if I disconnect it, that's back over here. Okay. So now for some reason, which I don't understand, it's not letting me View the merge with the camera 3D viewer. Just should. Okay. But if I change the perspective, I can see it. Okay. Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. So it's very hard for me now to, so let me quickly save that. Okay. Oh 
we can see what's happening there. I would love if this showed me through the camera 3D1, the background, but it's not. Here we go. For some reason it's not. Showing me. Not quite sure why. Because if I load it to perspective, I could see it. But if I see the camera, I can't. Okay. So that has to be some sort of mistake. So let me save that. Okay. Exit. And then hopefully, you know, by restarting DaVinci, that is something that uh, could come back, I guess. I, it's actually the first time uh, that has happened to me where I can't see the camera. So let me go back to my merge, load it, perspective. Let's look at the camera and yet no, nothing. Could it be because of that? It has nothing to do with that. Okay. I figured it out. Okay, I figured it out. And this is what it is. It's the depth. So if I go over 50, I see what happened. Okay. So let's keep it there. That's because if you put your uh, actual, I see the um, the far distance to 50 that was overlapping over the actual depth of the uh, image so the image the depth was exactly at the same point where the far clip was and that's why it was overlapping okay got it all right so uh now that we see our plate okay um perfect let's get back into it um now i can basically uh, uh the point cloud here let's let's lower that because i cannot see much with it okay and then let's look at the um, the merge 3d here and if I load back in right the 71 frame 71 here right over here. That's my perspective. Change it to camera, and then select the points here.
Okay. Then we are going to right click and then say point cloud 3D1 and change it to create image plane here. Okay, so that creates an image plane. Now um, that's going to add two more nodes to our uh, to uh, our comp here, and we can take those two nodes, right? And then uh, the actual we can disconnect that, uh, delete the merge, take the image plane that we just added here, okay? And let's add that to our 3D. Uh, okay, so now image plane, we're going to go to our transform here, and then lock X Y Z. And then let's make this bigger, okay, up to that point over here, okay. And now what's going to happen is that by we are going to basically add a catcher to this plane, okay. Um, so I'm going to add a catcher here and then connect it to my image plane. And now those points are locked, okay, um, by uh, by adding the uh, catcher and then now what we can do is to really connect that cam uh, to our merge here and the uh, footstep is now gone okay and what i can do next is to um uh what i can do next now is to i i don't really need now to have the plate connected any longer here so i can just connect that and then i can go back to my merge too Okay, and I can see that that's now gone. I can also go back to my camera tracker here and I can see that the patch is still there. Uh, if I go back to also my merge and change that to perspective, I can see that uh, the, the, the patch is like where we need it to be now. Okay, and then uh, my camera here, 71, I can load it, I can see that as well, okay. And that's perfect. I'm gonna go here also on my, uh, this is my projection here on my image. I'm gonna uh, uh, enable image plane, this one. So if I go on Immerse 2D and load it, you can see now that we have our um, uh, patch. Now it, it, our uh, footstep, now it's all, it, it's gone, okay? And we did that with the projection technique. Perfect. Now, what's one of the issues here? One of the issues is that you can see here that there is it, it's it's basically discolored here, okay? And it looks kind of uh, as if um, see that we can remove. Uh, it looks as if uh, it's it's just not really uh, matching. Okay, that's happening because we have to do a few steps. Step number one, okay, is to uh, um, go back to my color correction. If you look at it, if I check the, the patch here, okay, look what's happening. Color corrector, look what happens when I uncheck that. The uh, spot here is gone, but also our ship now, it, it's now matching with how it was. So what I want to do, because we like the ship with this haze, right, it's to create a rectangle around it. So I'm gonna take the rectangle tool here and then move this to about here, connect it on the rectangle. I'm gonna soften the edge by this amount, not really soft, like that, okay. And now our patch looks it's gone, okay? Uh, the patch is only gone though for at, at this at this frame, okay? So at frame 71. However, if I go towards the middle here, we can notice the patch, okay? Actually, not at all. Pretty good. It's basically gone. Okay, you can see it. If I deactivate this,
adding the rectangle it's basically gone without it frame 40 see it would have been still here and then if I activate that look it's also that's because okay so let's look at it again here rectangle Yeah, the patch really comes in at this point here but by activating the rectangle it's it's basically gone okay because another thing that you could have done is to add another tool here another color corrector just to cover that okay so perfect so now that we basically did that all we got to do now is to add the flag here in the background okay and we're going to add it here okay just the way you saw on my uh the beginning of the video so in order to do that what I'm going to do next is to uh, basically bring it in. So bring in the media pool. I'm going to go on the 3D tracking. I'm going to bring in the pirate ship here. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do next is to call this. Okay. So I'm going to basically uh, right click on it <laughs> when Fusion is done loading. Uh, rename. Uh, I'm going to call it actually pirate. flag beautiful right so we have our pirate flag here now, now the next thing we want to do is to bring in a um uh, channel here boolean it's probably that's how it's called okay and uh okay so i'm going to bring that in and um and i'm also going to bring in a fast noise okay and let me load the pirate chip and then let's put the fast noise into the foreground of our channel here, Boolean. And with our fast noise selected now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here on operation. Okay. And we are going to say add. Okay. Here. There's a bunch of different ones, but you're going to say add. And then alpha, I'm going to say alpha background here. Okay, and then on the fast noise, we need to start animating that a little bit. So look what's happening here. I am also going to change, by the way, the settings on the um, the fast noise here, the image. Uh, we have a very dark uh, line here because I'm going to go an image here and we need to match the resolution. This is 1920 by 1080, but it's actually 1920 by 1280. Okay, so that covers the actual um image here and then on the uh fast noise let's start uh playing a little bit with it so i'm gonna move the seeth rate to something like that okay so look what's happening now we are almost getting that kind of sort of like effect as if the flag it's now moving as you can see there right that kind of animation however we need to uh, adjust a little bit so i'm gonna take the my computer is loading a little bit and take the brightness here and bring it down like that and then take the take the contrast so i'm going to bring the contrast app up brightness up so contrast here right and just too bright something like that should do it now we get something more like this effect works much much better now perfect so now let's attach this into our image into our composition sorry so i'm going to take that now and add the image plane okay right behind it here and now let's take the image plane and attach that to our merge 3d okay and now what's happening is if i go back to my merge 3d and i load that i can't see my flag if i go my flag here 
on my image plane, you can see that I cannot see where the actual flag is. One thing I want to do now is to basically find out where the pirate ship is here. Okay. And uh, figure out the on the transform here, I'm going to pin it, then go to my image plane. And on the transform, I'm going to probably copy a little bit the uh, parameters here. So it's about the X is about 19. The uh, Y is about nine. And the uh, Z is at minus 40. Okay, so now by doing that, what I'm doing really is figuring out here where um, basically putting the ship, I'm sorry, into our plane here where our uh, ship is. Okay, so if I move. I can see that my flag, okay, it's now here. You can see that, okay, close by the ship here. And then I can move it even further, okay, and just bring it to that same position. Something like that. Now I can see that I need to move this in this space a little bit, like more in. See, not okay, perfect, because it was overlapping a little bit. So now you can see that we are almost there. We can adjust a little bit now. The uh, oh, by the way, the the first image plane we can definitely unpin that, unpin it, go back here. Okay, so now we can go back to it, and then let's adjust the Z space to something like that and we're looking good we're almost there okay the positioning is actually really nice right now um to do just a few more adjustments Something like that works. And then let's look at it. Okay. And it's looking much, much better now. And I can see that. So let me actually see it on the merge here and press two to put on the viewer. And I can see that the flag, it's in the background right now. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, we're, we're, looking, we're looking good. Um, there's a few more steps left now for us to uh, adjust a few, few uh, more things. Okay, uh, it's, it's looking pretty good over there. Okay, so the next thing I want to do actually now is to add a, uh, another, uh, uh, what's called a displace 3D node. Okay, so... Um, Let's add that. And let's connect the image plane here to my displace 3D. Okay, disconnect that. Take the image plane, put a displace 3D. Now connect the displace 3D into our merge. Okay, and that should do it. Perfect. Uh, awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my displace 3D. First thing is we need to adjust a little bit, uh, a few things. So. Uh, I'm going to go back on my image plane and on my controls, I'm going to subdivisions, take it all the way up to about 40 here. Okay. And uh, that's the first thing I want to do. 
And second thing, I'm going to go into my displays now, and I'm going to adjust the here. One second. It's taking it's taking a while to load. Fast noise here it needs to be connected to the displays 3D here. And now on my displays 3D, okay, if I can adjust this subdivisions and also adjust the scale. Fast noise. Get a rectangle here. Okay, and then let's move this a little bit. Center X, and then let's adjust that to about there, and then soften the edge. That's how it looks before. Okay, so on the chain of boolean here. And then once we soft the edge, I can also move this a little bit. I, I can move the rectangle a little bit on this side. Okay, so it looks more something like that. Okay, that's looking good. Okay. It's looking much more realistic now. And if I go back to my, um, my image here, okay, we can see that that's much better. So now, uh, as I said, the subdivisions will take it to 40. Then the displacement here, the scale, you reduce it to about something like that. Okay, so now we save. And now the flag is moving in the background. And we could see that we have the final. results here. If I look at it, we can see that over there as well. Okay, awesome. This was a very, 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 very long tutorial. Okay, uh, few, uh, a lot of steps here involved with uh, creating the um, the look. In either case, there might be an instance where, uh, going back to uh, here to the merge, okay, uh, remember how I uh, basically created, uh, I basically, I added the color corrector here, and then if I deactivated it, remember, uh, you would see the, the specific patch on the, um, on, on here, okay. Um, 
Okay, but that that was that could have been an option where you might add another color corrector just to uh, color correct basically uh, that specific patch as well. If that was like more left, so let's say you went to frame forty two, that was going to be more. Okay, you uh, you can basically match it to the background uh, as well by basically just creating another mask, right? You would do something like you add a new color corrector, you go to options, you do pre-divide, uh, pre post-multiply, then you would add another rectangle, right, uh, here, and then basically you would move that same rectangle, right? So in the case that you still, after you did the first color corrector, you did all of that, as I said, you add the second color corrector, you do all these steps, then by adding the rectangle now, what you basically going to do is to take that rectangle here, okay? So you can obviously also adjust a little bit the um, uh, how much you want it. So like the width, right? You can make it a little bit smaller and you can do the same with the height, right? So let's say it was going to be here. And then you can take and soften that edge and then you can go back to your color corrector, right? So you connect this obviously to your color corrector here. Uh, you go back to your color corrector, you go in correction, then you would go back to that frame, so basically frame 71 here, and then you would basically uh, take a keyframe to put on your color here and one on your gain, right? And then, so let's say you, that's the same patch that I'm talking about. So let's say you, you still yours was uh, basically not doing it. Uh, you take it and you basically would um, uh, basically add uh, those keyframes. Then you'd go in the in the beginning, right? And then you would adjust, you know, uh, if that was the case, like a little bit the color you do. So you, you would basically like play with the color a little bit, right, in the beginning. And then you would do the same thing with the uh, gain as well, right? So you go, you'd add the gain, uh, okay? And then uh, you do the same basically for uh, the, the middle here, okay? So that was the case. So see, it's like more green. Uh, so because I, I did that, I did that in the beginning here, okay? So uh, it's there, and then you go back here and then you adjust once again, you go to the color, bring it down, you would play with your gain, okay? And basically, you just adjust it that way. So in my case, it, the patch is really not there. So you see, even if I delete it, there's nothing. But if that was the option for you, that's that's the way yeah, you would do it. Okay. And that concludes our tutorial with um, uh, lesson 12. I hope this was useful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post them. And I'll see you on the next one.